Well, the other day I pruned my grapevines back. I did a bunch of videos on how I selected what I did and what I selected. And it runs almost 18 minutes and I haven't put it up. Because you probably don't really care about it because I've done enough on grapes. And these are the two I grew from cuttings last year. Uh, that's a mock orange that I'm hoping will come out, but it won't. Probably won't. I put these to let them harden off here. Two of the uh, five mock oranges uh, made it. They're a great plant to have, and when they flower and the wind's blowing across the yard, you can smell them. I got a bunch of hostas growing. We bought some late at the season. They were selling them for a dollar a piece, and I let them hover winter in the greenhouse. And uh, some of those smaller ones uh, are ones that we had in pots that, uh, little small pots that were growing up, and I've uh, transplanted them into bigger pots. Well, I cleared off this whole tray, which is about four feet by about 30 inches, and put all the stuff out in the gazebo. I use it, uh, I have all my potting soil in that trash can. I'd rather than run back and forth to fill up these milk cartons. This is where I'm going to put my better boys in. This is a new one. I punch holes in the bottom with a piece of pipe that's been sharpened. And I write the name of them. And then these are the ones I used last year. Uh, if you take your plants out of them, let them dry out, and store them in a dry place, they won't, won't get them crushed. You can use them for two or three years. And I've used up I had two-thirds, well, about three-quarters of a barrel of potting soil, my own, and now I've got to start working on this one. And I've got so many things to plot up, uh, I might use it all. I've redone a bunch of uh, my flowers, coleus, the hostas are coming along. I need to transplant those marigolds, and there's some more coleus that uh, were left in the pot, because like the foxglove here, I take out a few of them. And uh, the ones I left in there are growing faster than the ones that are in the trays. And I'm having trouble with my orange marigolds coming up and I replant it again. And uh, that's probably 40% uh, of the seeds or less that I put in the pots. And here are my seedlings that are uh, about 23 days old. Some of them look pretty good. The ones on the end, I had a full foot uh, fluorescent light up here. So the ones on the end didn't get as much light as the ones in the middle. But I need to transplant those today. And there are my uh, sweet millions that are nine days behind the others. And I need to get them up there so they'll get some more sun. I did these uh, Saturday. And you can see them all leaning to this jealousy window. There's my parsley, a few more coleus. These are some smaller amaryllis bulbs. And when you uh, want to transplant, I use a fork to transplant most of my stuff from the pots that size into these six packs. But something like colias is so small that I just take a spoon like this and the soil is uh, moist. Stick it in there and just push it back and forth. And then I just scoop the little plant out of the container, four inch pot and put it in that little groove and mash the soil to it because these are so small when you transplant them anyway I gotta start transplanting tomatoes as you'll notice this soil is uh, not wet if you have wet soil and you try to take this out the soil will fall off the roots if you let it dry out a little bit it will stay together I fill these cartons up about two-thirds of the way. I take my fingers down and put them in there and open that hole up big enough to take that. And then I've loosened this from the bottom and I pick it up by the stem. And you can plant the seed leaves anytime you want. But I'm going to plant it that far down. Firm it down with your fingers. Try to get it in the middle if you can without breaking it. And that's all you have to do. And that, my friends, is why I get four to eight times the tomatoes you do. Now these are fairly healthy plants. 
Now those stems are still green. Some of these are turning purple. When they, if you put that one in right there, see how purple that looks? A cutworm can't eat it. But they can eat the green ones. But these plants are 23 days old. And in uh, another 30 days, they'll be pushing 40 inches tall. Well, it's about down 45 minutes later, and that's uh, 61 plants here. For somebody who is going to plant 33 this year, that's what we usually do. Last year we tried four kinds, and we ended up with about 52. Uh, this is more than I'll use, but we have had a thunderstorm take them out with hail. And late in the year, when it's July, you can't buy a tomato plant anywhere. There are none to be available, so I grow a few extras. And the ones I don't use, I usually sell. And up here I have uh, two more, I got 12 more 4th of July's, which is a great salad tomato. And I put uh, some of my seedlings up here to get a little sun. It's obviously a runt that will never make it. And that's a runt that probably won't make it. Anyway, that's about it. My legs are tired. I need to get me a stool that I can sit on to do this. Well, there's 61 tomato plants there in two quart containers, uh, half gallons, so that's 30 gallons, but since they're not totally as tall as they originally were, maybe 25 gallons. This is a 32 gallon trash can. It wasn't filled to the brim, but I definitely put a hurt on it. Now you know why I make my own. I couldn't afford to go out and buy bags of uh, potting soil to put up this much stuff because they measure theirs in quarts, not gallons. But anyway, it's uh, 4 o'clock. Wednesday, the 23rd of April. Not supposed to get down near freezing for the next 10 days. So, uh, hopefully we can get some of this stuff outside before long. These will have to stay in here for, even though they get some sun through this, uh, plastic it is dirty and my the plastic I used to use let more good light through uh, these seem to get leggier with this plastic I don't know what the difference is but after they've sat here for about a week or more and it's going to be warm every day and not get down in below 40s at night I'll put them outside shield them from the sun and the wind for a few days and then let them take off well, yesterday my bride made probably my most favorite jello dish on the planet. It's Aunt Sylvia's jello salad. Hopefully this camera and this light will do it justice. It is made with three kinds of jello, walnuts, carrots, pineapples. It is the best tasting thing on the planet. My Aunt Sylvia, Kay's Aunt Sylvia, would uh, make this for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the reunions, and if she was on the phone and saying what could she bring, and she said, don't worry, tell Bernard I'll bring him that jello salad. I could literally eat this entire thing. It is the best tasting jello I have ever had in my life. We probably need to do a video on how to put it together, but it is absolutely great. Best tasting jello I have ever eaten. Bar none.